Hello and welcome back to Sora Assist. Adam here. We've got the transfer news for you today over the last seven days. Favourable transfers, so make sure you do stick around for that. If you do like this video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're not signed up to Sora Football, you can sign up using the link below to get a free limited card and 13 common cards. If you want to try out the baseball MLB, then you can use the link as well below to get a star common card and also 12 common cards. Okay guys, let's get straight stuck into today's content then, which is the favourable transfers, in my opinion, over the last seven days. None of this content is financial advice, of course. So the first one is that Danny Alves has now joined Mexican side Pumas on a free transfer and has a contract until June 2023. So there's no stopping the 39 year old. It does seem to be wanting to continue his um, glittering career and he's now moved to the Mexican League where he's going to be playing his trade until 2023. Now, Alves is a fantastic scorer on the scoring matrix and all those 39, don't let that deceive you. His stats were still looking fantastic when he did get some game time for Barcelona. He's now playing in the Mexican League, which is probably going to be an easier league than the Spanish League. So I expect his scores to continue and he could potentially be a first choice player as well at the Pumas. As you can see he's got some really good scores as well on his score graph. Look at his full graph all the times he's been playing as you can see his scores are absolutely brilliant. So it's definitely worth a punt if you do like your older players. And he has got a contract until 2023 like I say and he is expected to start the upcoming game. So it's been confirmed now that Szymanski has now signed for Feyenoord from Dynamo Moscow. I think this is going to be a really good move for Szymanski and I think he's got more chance of his scores improving rather than decreasing. He's still only 23 as well and he's got under 23 eligibility until July 2023. Now he was on fantastic form for Dynamo Moscow and I do expect that to continue at his new club like I say. There's probably more risk of the scores improving than decreasing, I would say, at his new club, or potentially staying the same as there was at Dynamo Moscow. And as you can see here, he had some fantastic scores with the Russian outfit. So really good pick up this one if you are after an under-23 midfielder or a challenger midfielder in general. So Gaston Avila has now signed for Royal Antwerp in the Belgium League from Rosario Central in Argentina. Now, this guy is only 20 and he does have a contract until 2026 with Antwerp. So it's a very long contract. They've obviously got a lot of faith in this young player. Now, if we look at some of his scores, so if we look at a period where he was getting some first team minutes in the Rosario Central team, as we can see here, he's got some absolutely fantastic numbers here. Now, if we consider this is probably the time when he was probably around 19. I think this is looking really promising for his future potential, especially now he's moved to the Belgium League, which I say is probably going to be a bit more of an, uh, an easier league, certainly physically, than the Argentinian League. So this guy could really do well at his new club if he does get those first team minutes. So another good transfer here is that Taglifico has now signed for Lyon from Ajax. Now, of course, someone leaving Ajax is probably not always the best of news for managers who own that card or that player. But in Taglifico's case, he was in and out of the team a little bit. It wasn't always certain that it was going to be the first choice in that left-back role. And now he has joined Olympic Lyon in the French division, which I say is probably on par with the Netherlands division. He has signed a three-year deal as well, and I think he's going to do really well for the French club. He's also capable of getting some really good scores. And of course, he's got that international utility as well with Argentina. If we look at some of his scores recently, where he has been playing, getting some more recent regular game time in the Ajax side, we can see some really good numbers here. If we look at his full score graph, we can also see another period here where he was getting first team football. And as you can see, these are really, really good scores. So this guy is looking really promising to me. Could be a potentially really valuable champion Europe forward as well to boot. So we've got another signing here that Adama Demispor has now signed Yaroslav Rakitsky for a one year contract with an option of a further year as well. Now those of you who have been playing so rare for quite some time you should know about Rakitsky because as his time playing for Zenit he was getting some absolutely fantastic scores. 
Now he's moved to a decent club in the Turkish division as well. And I would say the quality of football in Turkey is probably around the same as the Russian league. And if we look at some of his scores when he was playing for Zenit, we can see some brilliant numbers and plenty of scores in the green area as well, which is course of what we want from a player. He's also got a 100 score here. Really, really good numbers there. So it's definitely worth one worth considering. I would have thought it'd be first choice as well for Demispor. And he's looking fairly cheap to me at these sorts of prices. So it could be a really decent pickup. So we've got news from Galatasaray here that Amini Harit has now signed for Galatasaray on a three year contract. So I think he's probably going to have a good chance of getting first team football at Galatasaray. Galatasaray have made some really good signings actually in the transfer window. And I think they could really crack on this season and hopefully get them back to the top of Turkish football. And Harit is definitely going to help that with his attacking style of play. He was of course playing for Schalke who was relegated to the Bundesliga 2. But now he's got his chance in the top division again in the Turkish league for one of the top sides if they do get back to the real form. We can see some good numbers here as well recently playing for Marseille. Well I think he was potentially on loan. And we can see he has impressed when he was getting those 90, 80 minutes, that sort of thing. If we look at his full score graph as well, we can see another period here where he was getting regular minutes. And he was also getting uh, some decent scores again, including a 100 score. So I think this guy is definitely worth checking out. He could be a decent player for Galatasaray in the upcoming season. So the next story that we've got here is the AZ of Sand, Zeno Van Housden of Inter on loan with an option to buy. So Van Housen's career has sort of been stalled recently with injuries and a number of loan moves. Last season he was loaned to Genoa, but didn't really impress that much and he was injured as well to be fair to him. But now he's moved back to the Dutch division with AZ. Now this could be a really interesting move and he could get some really, really good scores here. If we look back at his history, back here where he was playing in the Belgium League, we can see some really high numbers here when he was playing last time in the Belgium League. This was going back to game week 98, man. But we can see some absolutely fantastic numbers here for a defender. And at a top club like AZ, I would have thought he'd recapture that sort of form. He's only still 23 as well, so I expect some big scores from Van Housen in his new club in the new season. So Nordi Michele has now signed for PSG. Moving to PSG is obviously a good move for any player. But I do like Nani McKellar and his numbers are looking decent as well in terms of the SSO5 scoring stats. Whether he's going to be a first choice at um, PSG remains to be seen yet. But he has signed a long contract with them until 2027. So there must have been some offerings of first team football thrown in there. Now if we look at some of his scores then. Now he was playing for Leipzig previously and we can see some really good potential here in terms of his scores and numbers. His stats are also looking fairly decent as well. And playing obviously a better side, I think he's going to really crack on, especially if he does get some first team minutes. So it could be one worth considering. Another one worth considering, and one that's another player that's moved to the Dutch league, is Osama Idrissi, who's now signed for Feyenoord. Now he did play for Cadiz last season in the Spanish league, of course. Previous to that, it was of course playing for Seville. Didn't really get that much game time though for Seville. Did get a little, a few games towards the end of the season for Cadiz, but it's not really taken off for him in Spain. So he's now playing in the Dutch league with Feyenoord, and if he's first choice, I expect this guy to score really well. Now, in terms of SO5 scores, we've not really got much to go off to be honest. But if you know what to look for in terms of stats on an SO5 player, then you'll know that Drissy has got all the potential to be a fantastic player for the scoring matrix on so rare. And I personally think he's going to be an absolutely fantastic pickup for Feyenoord, especially if he does start first team football as well, get plenty of minutes, then he's going to score really well. And he's really one that I'm tempted to pick up, especially since I've got Szymanski in my team already, who's of course now also signed for Feyenoord. So definitely one worth doing your research on. So apparently in Chelsea are interested in signing Jonathan David. Is of course currently playing for Lille. Now recently his form has dipped a little, but he has got still the underlying numbers that make him a brilliant SO5 choice up front. So it might be worth looking more into this rumour if he's moving to Chelsea, because if he does, 
I think he's probably going to perform really well for the London outfit. He is only still 22 as well, Jonathan David. He's obviously got eligibility till July 2024 as well for the under 23 division. And if we do look at some of his scores back here, now in the last year, although he's not been on great form recently, in the last year he's still scored 23 goals and also got 3 assists as well. So he's looking really strong in terms of his goal scoring ability. I do expect him to find those goal scoring boots sooner rather than later, especially if he's going to be playing at a club like Chelsea, who have obviously got plenty of creative players. So another contract transfer is that Jules Kunde is now signed for Barcelona from Sevilla. Even though Barcelona can't seem to pay the wages of the current staff, they're signing more players, <laughs> which seems a bit odd. So let's have a look at Kunde a little bit further then. So he's still 23 and he's got under 23, under 23 eligibility until July 2023. Got some decent scores as well for Sevilla, who of course are a decent outfit. But I do expect Barcelona to have a fantastic season in this upcoming season with Xavi at the wheel. If we look at his SO5 scores, he's got some an all-round score straight away that sticks out of 19.1 in the last year on average. And as we can see, he's also got some really good high average scores as well. So he's looking a really fantastic choice. And I do expect that to improve, like I say, at Barcelona. So the final transfer story this week is that Ozdiev has now moved to Fatih Karagumbruk in the Turkish league. Signed a three-year contract with the club as well. It's obviously previous playing for Zenit. And this is a card actually that I give away on one of my giveaways a few months ago. Now I think this move is probably going to be decent for Ozdiev. He's obviously not been playing first team football for quite a while now. He has been injured though to be fair to him. He's only just come back from injury at the end of the last season for Zenit. Now, if we do have a look at his score graph, we've not really got much information to go off. Well, they did get two decent scores here out of um, out of nine possible scores. So that's probably a pretty good ratio for a midfielder. And if we look at all his scores, we can see a period here where he was getting regular minutes for Zenit. It wasn't, this was before his big injury that was here. So he was getting regular minutes here. And we can see some fairly decent numbers here as well. So it might be worth one considering especially at these sorts of prices probably going to be a decent threshold player as well if you are looking for that type of player might be worth researching as well if he's going to be the first choice at fatty um, but to me i would think he would be because he's got plenty of experience as well and he's a former russian international don't know if he's going to get back into the russian team now or not but we'll see what happens there so that was all the latest transfer news over the last seven days. If you did like this video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. So any of these players that you like the look of and you've maybe got your eye on, consider buying for your team, do let me know in the comment section below. So any transfers that I've missed over the last seven days, favourable ones, do let me know in the comment section as well. And of course, if you've not signed up to Surrey yet, you can sign up using the link below to get a free limited card and 13 common cards on the football version. Or if you want to try out the MLB version of Surrey, you can also use the link below where you'll get a star common card and also 12 common cards as well, so you can enter the league straight away. Join the Surrey Assist Patreon today and receive twice weekly scouting for all Surrey licensed teams, giving you all the best options for your SO5 teams and unearthing those hidden gems before they become hot property. Digging deep into a player's stats and statistics to make sure that these players are all suitable for the so rare scoring matrix. Each player will also be given a current rating and potential rating out of 10. This will give you a good idea of how I rate that player on so rare in terms of the SO5 scoring matrix. You'll also get access to the full database of players that have already been scouted as well when you join the Surrey Assist Patreon. Not only that, but you'll also get access to the Surrey Assist members only Discord, where you can chat to me and other Surrey Assist members. So what are you waiting for? Get signed up today to the Patreon to receive all these benefits. Okay guys, thanks as ever for watching, and I'll see you again soon.